Hello everyone and welcome to my show. I'm the empath and today we've got Babel Babel. So, left off at the end of Exodus 27 where they're talking about making a bunch of things like altars and such. So, let's just continue on with that. Garments for the priests. Lovely. Summon your brother Aaron and his sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Separate them from the people of Israel so that they may serve me as priests. Make priestly garments for your brother Aaron to provide him with dignity and beauty. Call all the craftsmen to whom I have given ability and tell them to make Aaron clothes so that he may be dedicated as a priest in my service. Tell them to make a breastplate, uh, a breastpiece, an ephod, or ephod, uh, a robe, an embroidered shirt, a turban, and a sash. They are to make these priestly garments for your brother Aaron and his sons, so that they can serve me as priests. The craftsmen are to use blue, purple, and red wool, gold thread, and fine linen. Okay, I can get the purple. I think, I guess red and blue because what was makeup purple. Maybe. They are to make the ephod of blue, purple, and red wool, gold thread, and fine linen decorated with embroidery. Two shoulder straps by which it can be fastened are to be attached to the sides. A finely woven belt made of the same materials is to be attached to the ephod as, uh, so as to form one piece with it. Take two carnelian stones and engrave on them the names of the Twelve sons of Jacob, in the order of their birth, with six on one stone and six on the other. Have a skillful jeweler engrave on the two stones the names of the sons of Jacob, and a mount of uh, and mount the stones in gold settings. Put them on the shoulder straps of the ephod to represent the twelve tribes of Israel. In in this way, Aaron will carry their names on his shoulders, so that I, the Lord, will always remember my people. Make two gold settings and two chains of pure gold, twisted like cords, and attach them to the settings. Yeah, God being specific about what he wants his people to wear. I'm actually a little curious as to what these outfits would have looked like. I might look that up. Google! The breast piece. Make a breast piece for the high priest to use in determining God's will. It is to be made of the same materials as the ephod and with similar embroidery. It is to be square and folded double, nine inches long and nine inches wide. Mount four rows of precious stones on it. In the first row, mount a ruby, a topaz, and a garnet. In the second row, an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. In the third row, a turquoise, an agate, and an amethyst. And in the fourth row, a beryl, a canario, a, a carnelian, and a jasper. They are to be mounted in gold settings. Each of these twelve stones is to have engraved on it the name of one of the sons of Jacob to represent the tribes of Israel. For the breastpiece, make chains of pure gold twisted like cords. Make two gold rings and attach them to the upper corners of the breastpiece and fasten the two gold, cord, yeah, two gold cords on the two rings. Fasten the other two ends of the cords to the two settings, and in this way attach them in front to the stra shoulder straps of the ephod. Then make two rings of gold and attach them to the lower corners of the breastpiece on the inside edge next to the ephod. Make two more gold rings and attach them to the lower part of the front <sighs> of, the two, mm, of the two shoulder straps of the ephod. Sorry about that near the seam and above the finely woven belt. Tie the rings of the breastpiece to the rings of the ephod with a blue cord so that the breastpiece rests above the belt and does not come loose. When Aaron enters the holy place, he will wear the, this breastpiece engraved with the names of the tribes of Israel, so that I, the Lord, will always remember my people. Put the Urim and Thummim in the breastpiece so that Aaron will carry them when he comes into my holy presence. At such times, you must always wear this breastpiece so that he can determine my will for the people of Israel. The other priestly garments. Joy. The robe that goes over the ephod is to, made, is to be made entirely of blue wool. Shocker. Is uh, to have a hole for the head, and this hole is to be reinforced with a woven binding to keep it 
from Terry. Gee, you don't speak. I probably shouldn't talk like that because it'll sound like I'm mocking God, which I'm not. All around its lower hem put pomegranates of blue, purple, and red wool, alternating between gold bells, uh, alternating with gold bells. Aaron is to wear the robe when he serves as, as priest. When he comes into my presence in the holy place, or when he leaves it, the sound of the bells will be heard, and he will not be killed. Make an ornament of pure gold and engrave on it, dedicated to the Lord. Tie it to the front of the turban with a blue cord. Aaron is to wear it on his forehead, so that I, the Lord, will accept all the offerings that the Israelites dedicate to me. Even if the people commit some error in offering them. Oh, excuse me. Reading this much just does it. Like, I could, I could talk this much. But for some reason, reading this much makes me yawn a lot. Probably because I don't pace myself quite the same way as I do with how I talk. It's weird. Physics. Biology. Weave Aaron's shirt of fine linen and make a turban of fine linen and also a sash decorated with embroidery. Make shirt sashes and caps for Aaron's sons to provide them with dignity and beauty. Put these clothes on your brother Aaron and his sons. Then ordain them and dedicate them by anointing them with olive oil so that they may serve me as priests. Make linen shorts for them reaching from waist to the thighs, so that they will not expose themselves. Okay, for some reason my mind immediately went to Trainer Joey. Because the, because the shorts, eh. Anyway, so, I guess it works. Okay, I'll just keep reading. Make linen shorts for them, reaching from the waist th to the thighs, so that they will not expose themselves. Aaron and his sons must always wear them when they go into the tent of my presence, or approach the altar to serve as priests in the holy place, so that they will not be killed for exposing themselves. This is a permanent rule for Aaron and his descendants. Okay. Got being specific about his fashion statements. <laughs> People bash on gays. That's, that's just proof that gays have it any good with God, because stereotypically gays have good fashion sense. God is being all like, fashion designing here. I'm being silly and making a political point. Shirt erp. Sorry. I'm, I'm just going to go back to reading. Uh, chapter 29. Instructions for ordaining Aaron and his sons as priests. Again, a lot of the stuff that's being told right now doesn't necessarily apply to our day and age anymore. Unless you want to know how to make a good godly outfit as priests apparently and their buildings and tables and such this is what you are to do to Aaron and his sons to dedicate them as priests in my service take one young bull and two rams without any defects use the best wheat flour but no yeast and make some bread with olive oil some with uh, some without it and some in the form of thin cakes brushed with oil put them in a basket and offer them to me when you sacrifice the bull and the two rams. Bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of my presence, and have them take a ritual bath. Then dress Aaron in the priestly garments, the shirt, the ephod, the robe that goes over the ephod, the breastpiece, and the belt. Put the turban on him and tie on it the sacred sign of dedication, engraved, dedicated to the Lord. Then take the anointing oil, pour it on his head, and anoint him. Okay, just imagine if you had oil poured on your head. Like, imagine what that would actually be like. I, I, I don't know. It sounds slightly off to our day and age. Uh, so. Bring his sons and put shirts on them. Put sashes around their waists and tie caps on their heads. This is how you are to ordain Aaron and his sons. They are their descendants. Uh, they and their descendants are to serve me as priests forever. Bring the bull to the front of the tent of my presence and tell Aaron and his sons to put their hands on its head. Kill the bull there in my holy presence at the entrance of the tent. Take some of the bull's blood and with your finger put it on the ejections of the altar. Then pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. 
Next, take all the fat which covers the internal organs, the best part of the liver, and the two kidneys with the fat on them, and burn them on the altar as an offering to me. Let it burn, let it burn, but burn the bull's flesh, its skin, uh, and its skin. No, yes. Burn the bull's flesh, its skin, and its intestines outside the camp. This is an offering to take away the sins of the priests. Okay. Take one of the rams and tell Aaron and his sons to put their hands on its head. Kill it and take its blood and throw it against all four sides of the altar. Cut the ram in pieces, wash its internal organs and its hind legs, and put them on the top of the head and the other pieces. Burn the whole ram on the altar as a food offering. The odor of this offering pleases me. You know, I just made a face and then I realized that it smells pretty darn good working in Chick-fil-A. And we're cooking up chicken. So, um, yeah. It's just, it's worded weird, but he basically says he likes the smell of the food cooking. That's all of what he's saying. And, you know, if you're going to fuss at God about that, about like, ew, that's creepy. The only creepy part is just how it was worded. Yeah. Take the other ram, the ram used for dedication, and tell Aaron and his sons to put their hands on its head. Okay, in our day and age, if you were doing, if you tried doing this with your kids without telling them what was going on, they would know at this point not to put their hands on it. They'd just be like, everything I touch dies. And it would be terrible. Kill it and take some of its blood and put it on the lobes of the right ears of Aaron and his son on the thumbs uh, uh, on the thumbs of their right hands and on the big toes of their right feet. Just gonna just gonna put a little blood on you. A little, little ammo blood, no big deal. Throw the rest of the blood against all four sides of the altar. Take some of the blood that is on the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and his clothes. And on his sons and their clothes. He, his sons, and their clothes will then be dedicated to me. Just gonna, just gonna spritz some blood on you. A little bit of blood gives you a nice musk, a nice odor. Good lord. <laughs> cut away the ram's fat and the, uh, the fat, no. Cut away the ram's fat, the tail, the fat covering the internal organs, the best part of the liver, the two kidneys with the fat on them, and the right thigh. Why is that only the right thigh? From the basket of bread which has been offered to me, take one loaf of each kind, one loaf made with olive oil, and one made without it, and one thin cake. Put all this food in the hands of Aaron and his sons, and have them dedicate it to me as a special gift. Then take it from them and burn it on the altar, on top of the burnt offering, as a food offering to me. The odor of this offering pleases me. Take the breast of this ram and dedicate it to me as a special gift. This part of the animal will be yours. Yummy. When a, bre uh, when a priest is ordained, the breast and the thigh of the ram being used for the ordain uh, ordination will be get dedicated to me as a special gift and set aside for the priests. It is my unchanging decision that when my people make their fellowship offerings, the breast and the thigh of the animal belong to the priests. This is the people's gift to me. The Lord. Okay. This part, like, one of the things I love about parts like this, and there are there are plenty more that are that will come up like it, that are similar to it in several in several respects. But one of the things I love about this is God's like, okay, people, I want you to make these sacrifices. Yeah, that atone for your sins. You know, because you know it. You should have to do something. You shouldn't be able to get away scot-free. So you can do this to atone for your skins. Uh, yes, your skin. No, to atone for your sins. Um, but the thing is, is that with those offerings, you know, th there's a portion of it that's, you know, it's just for God because apparently he likes the smell of it. So we cook it up. He gets to smell it. Okay. I can understand that. But then, you know, there's through that that's how the priests and such get their food so they don't have to do any other job they don't have to do any other work stuff to get their food necessarily because they get food 
through that. Now, in a perfect world, basically the priest would be starving if that was their only food because, you know, knowing what's in, knowing that would have to do that. But I'm guessing God understands that we're broken and sinners at this point. So, understands that if by making this sort of ordination, there's there's enough food that the priests are going to have to sustain them. And I just love that God has those sorts of bits. Be like, you here's a way, like for the other people, here's a way that you guys can take care of your priests. You can take care of your people. Because I've told them what they are to do. And I've told you what you are to do. And what you do takes care of them so that they can do what they do. I just love that. The thought that I love the idea of just people taking care of each other just cause. It's it's just a really neat thing for me. So I love whenever I got you know, there there's moments in here. Aaron's priestly garments are to be handed on to his sons after his death, for them to wear when they are ordained. The son of Aaron who succeeds him as priest and who goes in the tent of my presence to serve in the holy place is to wear these garments for seven days. Um, unless there's some sort of like uh, task or like, I don't know, a test or something like that that I missed when I, you know, one of the first times I was reading through this, then I'm pretty sure that would, because uh, I don't think they specify necessarily, I'm pretty sure that would just be a firstborn sort of thing. They give a lot of stuff to the firstborns. So, all the sons have it the best. Take the meat of the ram used for the ordination of Aaron and his sons and boil it in the holy place. At the entrance of the tent of my presence, they are to eat it along with the bread left in the basket. They shall eat what was used in the ritual of forgiveness at their ordination. Only priests may eat this food because it is sacred. If some of the meat or some of the bread is not eaten by morning, it is to be burned. It is not to be eaten, for it is sacred. Perform the rites of ordination for Aaron and his sons for seven days, exactly as I have commanded you. Each day you must offer a, uh, offer a bull as a sacrifice, so that sin may be forgiven. This will purify the altar. Then anoint it with olive oil to make it holy. Do this every day for seven days. Then the altar will be completely holy, and anyone or anything that touches it will be harmed by the power of its holiness. Dang. So holy that it hurts to touch. Hmm. The Daily Offerings Every day for all time to come, sacrifice on the altar two one-year-old lambs. Sacrifice one of the lambs in the morning, and the other in the evening. With the first lamb, offer two pounds of fine wheat flour mixed with one quart of pure olive oil. Pour out one quart of wine as an offering. Sacrifice the second lamb in the evening and offer with it the same amounts of flour, olive oil, and wine as in the morning. This is a food offering to me, the Lord, and its odor pleases me. For all time to come, this burnt offering is to be offered in my presence at the entrance of the tent of my presence. That is where I will meet my people, and uh, that is where I will meet the people of Israel, and the dazzling light of my presence will make the place holy. I will make the tent and the altar holy, and I will set Aaron and his sons apart to serve me as priests. I will live among the people of Israel, and I will be, uh, I will be their God. They will know that I am the Lord, their God, who brought them out of Egypt, so that I could live among them. I am the Lord, their God. God sometimes likes to make it very clear that I am your God. Don't know if that's because we're stupid or because insecurity is could, is it possible that God is insecure? I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, um, if you've ever watched Groundhog Day, Bill Murray's character um, at one point says, you know, maybe, you know, maybe the reason why God is the way he is is just because he He's just had a lot of time. That's why he knows everything. And so, it it would not be beyond my scope of belief, because we were created in God's image, that maybe God, you know, what if God was one of us? Yeah, he just has, you know, more 
power and uh, time and such that we do, it would be believable. And it's a nice thought just because it makes God a little bit more relatable. And I don't know. That's a fun thought. Yeah. The altar for burning incense. This will probably be... This might be the last one that I do. Oh, of course. I pick a relatively longish one. The altar for burning incense. Make an altar out of acacia wood for burning incense. Hmm. It is to be square, 18 inches long and 18 inches wide. And it is to be 36 inches high. <laughs> Twice as high as it is here. Its projections at the four corners are to form one piece with it. Cover its top, all four sides, and its projections with pure gold, and put a gold border around it. Make two gold carrying rings for it, and attach them below the border on two sides, to hold uh, to hold the poles with which it is to be carried. Make these poles of acacia wood, and cover them with gold. I'm wondering if acacia wood is strong, or... I'm wondering if the gold makes it strong er <laughs> that'd be something to look into I don't know it's an interesting thought make two gold carrying rings for it and attach them below the border on two sides to hold the poles with which it is to be carried make these oh yeah I read that make these poles of acacia wood and cover them with gold put this altar outside the curtain which hangs in front of the covenant box that is the place where I will meet you. Every morning when Aaron comes to take care of the lamps, he is to burn sweet-smelling incense on it. He must do the same when he lights the lamps on the e uh, in the evening. This offering of incense is to continue without interruption for all time to come. Do not offer on this altar any forbidden incense. Oh, excuse me. Any animal offering or any grain offering... Um, do not offer any. Uh, do not offer on this altar any forbidden incense, any animal offering, or any grain offering, and do not pour out any wine offering on it. Once a year, Aaron is to perform the ritual for purifying the altar by putting on its four projections the blood of the animal sacrificed for sin. This is to be done every year for all time to come. This altar is to be completely holy, dedicated to me, the Lord. The tax for the tent of the Lord's presence. The Lord said to Moses, When you take a census of the people of Israel, each man is to pay me a price for his life, so that no disaster will come on him while the census is being taken. Oh, that's... Because later it talks about... Um, later it talks about don't do undo census sort of thing. And it's because there's a tax on it. Oh! Context. Keep that in your brain for later. Everyone included in the census must pay the required amount of money weighed according to the official standard. Everyone must pay this as an offering to me. Everyone being counted in the census, that is, every man 20 years old or older, is to pay me this amount. The rich man is not to pay more, nor the, uh, nor the poor man less, when they pay this amount for their lives. Collect this money from the people of Israel and spend it for the upkeep of the tent of my presence. This tax will be the payment for their lives, and I will remember to protect them. If you take this in term of government taxes, then basically, if you take this in term of government taxes, you can try to use this for your for your argument, but it also works against your argument. Basically. The way it works is you can't tell well, the you can't necessarily say that the rich need to pay more or the poor should have to pay less according to this. However, the rich should have to pay more or the poor should have to pay less in accordance to the other. So either if the poor are paying more than the rich because of like tax exemptions or whatever no the poor uh, the rich should have to pay just as much as the poor 
if the poor are paying less than the rich, um, then, you know, I don't know. Basically, everyone should have to pay the same amount. If you're going to go with percentage-wise of incomes and stuff like that, and that is your set standard, fine. But still, you know, like, having all these crazy tax exemptions, unless it's because they already have something that's majorly fueling stuff, they shouldn't have those tax exemptions. I'm, I'm not going to continue on with the politically stuff because I'm just going to... I'd like to finish this before too much longer. Um, collect this money from the people of Israel and spend it for the upkeep of the tent of my presence. Alright, so yeah, the taxes for you know, government type things, you know, ma managing the tent, that would be like, you know, managing the roadways, I guess, would be a decent equivalent. This tax will be the payment for their lives, and I will remember to protect them. The bronze basin. The Lord said to Moses, make a bronze basin with a bronze base. Place it between the tent and the altar and put water in it. Aaron and his sons are to use the water to wash their hands and feet before they go into the tent or approach the altar to offer the, flip, uh, the food offering. Then they will not be killed. They must wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. This is a rule which they and their descendants are to observe forever. The anointing oil. The Lord said to Moses, Take the finest spices, 12 pounds of liquid myrrh, 6 pounds of sweet-smelling cinnamon, 6 pounds of sweet-smelling cane, and 12 pounds of cassia, all weighed according to the official standard. Add one gallon of olive oil and make a sacred anointing oil. Mix the perfume. Use it to anoint the tent of my presence, the covenant box, the table, and all its equipment. <coughs> Bless me. I'm actually curious as to what that would smell like. That sounds like it would smell good. Use it to anoint the tent of my presence, the covenant box, the table, and all its equipment, the lampstand and its equipment, the altar for burning incense, the altar for burning offerings, together with all its equipment, and the wash basin with its base. Great, I'm going to be sniffing the rest of the video. Dedicate these things in this way, and they will be completely holy. Anyone or anything that touches them will be harmed by the power of its holiness. Then anoint Aaron and his sons, and ordain them as priests in my service. Say to the people of Israel, This holy anointing oil is to be used in my service for all time to come. It must not be poured on ordinary men, and you must not use the same formula to make any mixture like it. It is holy, and you must treat it as holy. Who's, uh, whoever makes any like it or uses any of it on anyone who is not a priest will no longer be considered one of my people. Dang. I guess it makes sense, you know. God talking about the sacrifices because you know the smell is pleasing to him. So no one else used the oil because the scent is pleasing to him and it should signify this is priest. So Yeah, no sniffings. The incense. The Lord said to Moses, take an equal part of each of the following sweet spices. Stacked S T A C T E. Onica, galbanum, and pure frankincense. Use them to make incense, mixed like perfume. Add salt to keep it pure and holy. Beat part of it into a fine powder. Take it into the tent of my presence and sprinkle it in front of the covenant box. Treat this incense as completely holy. Do not use the same formula to make any incense like it for yourself. Treat it as a holy thing dedicated to me. If anyone makes any like it for use as perfume, will no longer be considered one of my people. And that's the end of that. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Like and favorite if you enjoyed. Subscribe to become a VIP today. And I will see you all.